Look at that, it's horse poo. Horses are a valuable resource in this part of the world, so they're rarely left to run wild. Where there are horses, there's a good chance of finding people. Really distinct. And they're all the way along here. If that isn't fresh, you smell it smells fresh. This is southern Utah, known as Red Rock Country, after the epic landscape of the Colorado Plateau. With an average elevation of over 6,000 feet, it's one of the highest states in the US. My plan was to parachute in, but there's a problem. isn't gonna stop. As soon as I'm confident, I'm gonna go for it. But make no mistake, this is dangerous. I'm at the mercy of the furious prop wash from the plane's engines and terrifyingly close to the thundering rear wheel. One piece. Smoking trout. Not quite a nice one. Ah, fair to say. And I've got one red hot backside. Just got completely shredded. Okay, let's go going. Wow, what a vista. It's a long way down there. Just a crazy landscape. I've got my bearings and now I'm heading south to lose altitude. Up here it's cold with low oxygen and low humidity. This could quickly lead to fatigue, thirst and at night hypothermia. Oh. Even something like this can help you. Just gives you some leverage to push your body out from the slope. Temptation is when it gets steep and you get scared, you tuck in and that's when your feet drop out from under you. You want to be out from the slope, put your weight on it and descend like this. So it's just an alpine technique they use on steep snow and ice. To be honest, it's pretty similar. Okay, cool. This technique requires confidence and a little practice, but ultimately it's efficient and fast. There's loose scree underfoot. Look, that's the last of these spires. And then we're out of them. Let's get down to the trees. That's how we're going to find food and water. There are mountain lions in this area. And one of the dangers of them, they're very bright, but they're also opportunistic hunters. Mountain lions or cougars are stalk and ambush predators. Almost invariably, whenever there have been attacks on humans, the lions approach from behind and completely without warning, having tracked them. Even this sort of terrain is classic for mountain lion attack, where they can drop down, use their body weight to pin you, go for your throat. And good little tip, if you've got dark glasses on, stick them on the back of your head. And it looks like then you've got eyes in the back of your head, and that's going to help deter them. More than 60,000 Mormon pioneers made the arduous journey west to Utah in the mid 19th century. Remains of an old cabin. Some founded large settlements, others carved out solitary homesteads in Utah's vast wilderness. Wow, check this out through here, look. Probably an old pioneer's hut. With a bit of work, this will make a good overnight shelter. But before that, there's food to consider. This cabin will have been built near a water source, a priority for any settler. And that's going to be a good place to look for something to eat. Semi -sosa. And this is going to be perfect for a bit of fishing. Actually, look, there's lots of willow all along here. This gives me an idea of how I make a simple fish trap. That's going to make a really simple trigger mechanism. That notch, the trigger, fits in like that. It can go under tension until anything releases it. 
and that's an under tension. And I attach a fishing wire to that end, cast it out, anything catches it, dislodges this, dislodges it. And that then pulls the hook into the fish's mouth and it's caught. Okay, find some bait and then we'll set that and be good to go. Lake and river banks are often teeming with life. What's happened there? <laughs> Have to get to his head quickly, otherwise they end up biting you. With a little garter snake, just swimming through the water there, just spotted him. There's going to be at least some dinner. Like a snake gut make perfect there. fishing bait. The line set, now to head back to base and sort out bedding for the night ahead. Really, I want to make myself some sort of bed that's off the ground. One of the dangers of old cabins like this. Going to be a magnet for snakes. The floorboards will make for a solid, if none too comfortable, bed platform. That's going to be wide enough there. You can jam one end into the wall, and, and I found right. just a thing to suspend the other. Actually, looks got a noose on the end. It would have been a lasso, that. Let's get that in. But this is a quick assembly. A little crude, perhaps, but effective. OK, so that's a good bed platform off the ground. With bed and shelter sorted, it's back to the fish trap I set two hours ago. It has triggered. With a line that's quite slack, so it might just have been the wind. Oh, hang on. Oh, look, we've got something. I thought it was just slack in the wind, but actually she was caught around all of those reeds. That's a little bass fish. That's a great catch. That means I've got a snake and some fish. Tonight, I eat. But first, I need fire. We can just put as a frying pan on there. Easier said than done getting it off though. The roasting hot pan and a nicely cooked fish. And that just looks incredible. Good nutrition, good protein, lots of good fats and minerals and vitamins in that. Really good sized meal this. Um, I didn't even have to be there to catch it. Fresh food and the great outdoors. There's simply nothing better. I've just spent a night in the wilds of southern Utah. Breakfast is a small garter snake I caught at the lake. It's a good way of cooking him. It really kills any bacteria. It's been bubbling away for about 10 minutes. That's good to eat now. The snake is an acquired taste at the best of times. Some people say that snake tastes like chicken. But I don't know what sort of chicken they're eating. It's bony, sinewy. Not very like chicken. Time to get moving. Temperatures in this high altitude desert break 100 degrees. Right now it's cooler, but in this territory water is always an issue, and a few miles of this will burn through supplies. So I'm on the lookout for places where rainwater might collect. Look, there's water on the rock here. Moisture coming down a seep. This is rainwater dripping through the rock from above. That's nice. Collecting it would take hours. Instead, I'd take a useful hydration boost, then get on my way again. Oh, no, rabbit! I spotted a rabbit ahead. This is worth the chase. He's faster than me and quickly out of sight. But there's only one direction he can go. And if he hits an obstacle, I'll have him cornered. Crunch. But no joy. The canyon's opened up and he's escaped. He's gone. At least he showed me a way out of that slot canyon. <sighs> oh, what a feeling. And almost all of the rivers here are going to run down and meet the mighty Colorado. And that just cuts its way across, across the wild west. Look, you can see the rivers running much faster here. All this white water, 
and like flood debris as well in the middle of the river. The good part of that is it means we're losing altitude and making progress. But progress is never guaranteed down tight canyons like this. A nightmare this. This canyon wall juts out into the river and it doesn't look like there's a way over it or around it. So the first thing is to get rid of this. Before braving white water like this, I want to shift this driftwood out of the way. The last thing I want is to get snagged or pinned against it. The amazing force of the water rips a tree away and under the overhanging rock. Might be a bit of hold your breath time around there. To make sure I'm not swept away, I'm going to use my trusty lasso and tie it off to a solid anchor point. Put a constrictor knot around this. One knot I do not want to come undone. The constrictor knot is an effective binding knot. It's simple and secure. Absolutely locked on itself. I won't come undone. Now to put it to the test in this very fast flowing water. Okay, once I'm round, I'm going to give two strong tugs. That means it's good and you follow. I'm holding myself out of the mainstream for as long as possible. And I've got blow on this. Because when the full force of the water catches me, I'm gone. That's the signal. Now it's the cameraman's turn. Pretty horrible feeling when you're under the water waiting to pop up. We're around that camping corner. And we get moving again. Good job, though. Really good. Committing. <laughs>